Irene, great to have you with me. I was totally fascinated by the hair care market in, in Africa. And your story really piqued our interest because it's not only a great story about a woman in, in, in an entrepreneurial woman who's got this great vision, but it's also this business of Wix. So tell me, how did you how did you get into this business? Firstly, thank you for having me today. Um, how Maureen got into this type of business. Um, it's such a long story because I never visioned myself actually being at this point today because originally I actually studied media and graphic design, but I found myself in the digital space industry and I realized that um, as a personal being, I was stronger at selling a product than a service. And then I found myself selling wigs for a Chinese manufacturing company um, the first year of my career. And then Wikina came along, you know, because I am a woman who's for other women and the vision of Wikina made sense. So when you say it made sense, this idea that you yourself, because your business model is an interesting one, you're a direct selling model. So, but like what Avon have been so successful and the Tupperware parties, I think for people who don't know the Avon story, a lot of people relate them to, you know, how they used to sell Tupperwares in the old days, <laughs> door to door, right? Like encyclopedias. Mm. So how did you get from that to where you are with Wakina? What was that jump? Okay, so firstly, for most people that don't know what Wikina is, Wikina is SA's first networking marketing company that empowers women to sell Brazilian and Peruvian hair without a startup cost. What this means is women register to become resellers, just like Avon or Tupperware or Herbalife. And when they register to become resellers, they actually get their own personalized URL link, which is basically a website in their own name, which has all the stock Wikina has to offer. And they use this website to actually market and sell anything to their potential buyers or to salons, name it, the industry is endless. And for everything that they sell, they earn 20% commission. And we've actually set up bonuses in place to actually motivate and incentivize women to actually sell more, you know? And starting, you know, most people would actually be very skeptical, like, what is Wikina? I've never heard of Wikina. And it's so hard, like, being a new company and always having to to tackle those questions because as we know like the digital uh, age there's a lot of online scams that are happening and like people are very 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 skeptical like if i join wikina how will i be assured that my product is actually going to be delivered you know i've had to face all these challenges but um i don't know i feel like in 10 years we'll be as famous as hobo life in south africa i hope you know? And that's a great goal to have. And I mean, I, I mean, you are operating in a category which is growing. The African hair care market in all its different dimensions is, is worth billions. And it's not just in South Africa, it's across the whole continent. So tell me a little bit about wigs. Uh, you know, so, so you've got these wigs. I mean, what is this thing about wigs and women? <laughs> Why do they like them? Why, what is it? And uh, you know, what is the, the whole the whole concept around wearing a wig rather than a weave or or your own natural hair okay can i use a practical example because sure. i can see you also have a middle part with your long natural hair as opposed to black girl we actually can't have hair that's this silk and this maintained because our natural hair is so coily and it's hard for us to how can I say it? It's hard for us to want the certain type of image without having to buy the synthetic Brazilian and Peruvian hair. And I think it's just about us women wanting to feel great and to be seen as beautiful. Uh, yeah, like it's so endless. It's because a insight. <laughs> reasons to why they want wigs, but it's something that sells um, to, to women of color, not even just women of color, because we also have extensions, ponytails for other races. Like even a white girl wants to put extensions in her hair to make her look longer because she has a hair growing problem. It's so many endless reasons. Yes, and it's true. I mean, I think it's an industry that kind of almost is 
is not under the radar, but you know, the, 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 the market certainly for extensions and the ponies and, and, and whatever has never really been in the mainstream. So when you, when we look at now what's happening, it is becoming more to the fore. You go to hairdressers, you see them everywhere. It's all of a sudden more acceptable as well. I think it's just a, a daily thing. I have to tell you that my grandmother who was French actually always wore wigs. So, I mean, it would interest you that it's not a new thing. And, and I used to ask her why she, you know, I was always curious as a child, why, why did you, why, why are you wearing a wig? She had very long red hair, um, very fine red hair. And, and she wore these very coiffed wigs. And she said to me that she just could never get that look from her hair. So she decided that the way to do it would be to wear wigs. And she had several, actually. So mm -hmm. it was actually a new not an unusual concept to me and it was just so intriguing to me that you know it it, it seems to now be gaining more and more momentum in in the african context for reasons obviously the world is global and we are influenced by celebrity and we have our we all do want to have a look a certain way and we want to try different things that's what it is like to be a woman right so yes. i mean i think that that's great and that's exciting so in terms of are there have there been specifically interesting things that you've seen in the wig choices? Do people buy wigs that are specific colors or lengths? What is your most popular selling wig? Okay. I think just like any other company, um, COVID last year and this year has hit as hard and has hit individuals really hard as well. And because of that, a lot of people have shifted from buying wigs that would cost thousands and thousands of rand to the daily affordable wigs because people just don't have the money or excess money to spend tons of amount in just the wig that they're not going to wear because they're home all day and because of that a lot of women has also started buying a lot of aftercare products to take care of their own natural hair at home because they're forced not to go to salons because last year for example like we were only able to operate digitally um, till um, we actually, we only started operating as uh, and delivering orders only after level three. And you can imagine level five, level four, and level three salons are still not open. And what are women doing at this time? They have to take care of their own natural hair at home. So a lot of aftercare products were actually top last year. And it's only now that the economy is opening up that women are actually starting to buy more of the curls, more of the long fringes because they're actually going back to their jobs and they're going outdoor. So I think that's what I've actually noticed in the posture in the industry. As well as us being an ML company, a lot of women have registered to become resellers as opposed to actual unit sales. So we can actually have tons and tons and tons of women that actually join to become resellers and sell to other women, but those members are not exactly pushing unit sales. So I think that's the great part about Wikina. Even though we weren't making as much unit sales, we were still getting tons of member signups because from, from March last year to March this year, we've actually managed to get over 1,000, 1,500 new sellers, which is a great number, you know, and we're hoping to grow more. So just on that point, I think the last question I would have for you is like, you know, we you explained to me that in the next decade you'd really become like a Herbalife or, or, or I even said an Avon, <laughs> which is a great goal to have. What does that mean? I mean, like, is it a number? Is it like fifty thousand women, one hundred and fifty thousand women? What what is the number that you put on that? How many women will you be empowering with Wakuna? I don't have a specific number that I want to reach, but I have certain targets for myself. I want in terms of brand awareness, because I feel like brand awareness is like the biggest challenge we're facing right now as a new business. We want when someone talks about Herbalife, Honey, uh, Flat Tummy Tea, to also associate all those brands with Wikina in terms of visibility. And once we have visibility, the numbers will always come. Well, I wish you, I mean, it's certainly a, a fascinating um, industry that you're in. And I, I think it's really great that you've set it up in the way you have and that you're empowering women. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, only a pleasure. Thanks for joining us.